I'm going to present a talk today. I want to say thanks to our sponsors. First of all, we we'll have really great people up here. If you know the people that work at these places, even better. Tell them thanks. B-Sides is awesome. We're very thankful to have them here. So my talk is called Future Plan and Easy Mode. I think that something that we all experience and maybe don't love doing is finding new jobs. And sometimes that's not your choice. Sometimes that choice is made for you. Uh, you graduate college and suddenly you have to pay bills, for example. Maybe your company uh, leaves you off. There's a couple of reasons that are not great opportunities for you to have to stretch that skill for the first time. Um, so using that muscle to your advantage is a super easy way to uh, just bone up on that skill. So here's my name, my pronouns. Uh, the nice word for indolent, uh, or excuse me, the nice word for lazy is indolent. I love doing things that are very efficient, uh, but I don't really like doing a lot of work on things if I don't have to. Uh, more information about me. Our big topics today are kind of these three pillars, uh, support system, documentation, and do it yourself. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is the support system. I think it's super important to make sure that you have people around you that support you um, and want to make sure that you are the best human that you can possibly be. Um, I have a ton of really awesome coworkers and former coworkers. Other uh, consequence of me volunteering in other ways in the organizations. Um, I volunteer for B-Sides, as you can tell, uh, Zach KC. Eric kind of asks everybody to do whatever they can to make this organization really awesome. So um, I would highly encourage you to find whatever that volunteer opportunity is. Sometimes that's through your church, sometimes that's uh, with your neighbors, whatever that is, find that for you. Um, something that I've noticed uh, as a direct com consequence of me volunteering is that I'm able to make really awesome great friends because I'm uh, pretty well known in the set KC world, for example, for doing uh, resume blow ups. If you've got a terrible resume that's 25 pages long, recruiters aren't going to want to talk to you. Um, has anyone had that experience in the past? No callbacks on uh, submitting jobs? Yeah, it's not fun. Um, so make new friends, find out uh, feedback from them that's positive. Um, sometimes that feedback can be kind of painful, but it's really nice when you're able to get that feedback and then turn that into something constructive. I would also recommend to seek out industry organizations. Um, a couple of organizations that I'm affiliated with, um, ISSA, ISC Squared, um, different certification bodies have different things, but it's pretty important to just make sure that um, if there is a certifi certifying body in your organization, um, to just go to those meetings, meet those people, figure out the problems that they're encountering, um, try to uh, figure out how you can use that to your advantage. Maybe there's uh, job opportunities that they're going to talk about. Um, sometimes that is uh, a new technology that you're not familiar with. Just enjoy the, uh, the new. Don't be afraid. This is the hard part, documentation. Who likes documentation in this room? <laughs> okay, there's a couple of you, but we're strange folks. Um, so what I would say for documentation is create a wish list. Talk about what things you are looking for in a job or what you're not looking for in a job. Sometimes you want to work in person because that's how you are more um, productive. Maybe you've got a home life that either doesn't have room, doesn't have time, doesn't have space for you to be working from home, so you want a job that you can work in person at. Um, sometimes you don't want to work weekends, so find that job too. Um, make a wish list of what your top maybe 10 or 5 or you know, just start that list. Figure out what you want in a job, figure out what you don't want in a job. Um, I don't want to work 80 hours a week, for example. I don't know many people that do, but for me that's a deal breaker. Um, the other thing that I would highly recommend is to record the hunt. Um, sometimes it can be really deflating to send out like hundreds of resumes or job applications and not hear anything back. If you can't keep track of that in a very reasonable, like measured way, it's going to be either something you avoid or something you don't do well. Um, so what I like to do is make like an, an Excel spreadsheet, um, write like the date you applied to something, the title that you applied to, the company, maybe a link to the job posting, um, the name of the recruiter that you've talked to, um, any notes, like do you have a friend that works there? Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can kind of quantify what you've done, but that will keep you organized and allow you to pick that up when you've got 10 minutes to look at that list versus spending an agonizing two hours trying to figure out, hey, who did I last hear from when I applied for that job at Uber or whatever that may be. I think kind of also another painful thing is to record your wins. 
Um, we all do really great things as people, but sometimes it is hard for us to um, take that reflection point and remember like the positive things that you've done. It's really easy for us to remember the things that we've done poorly, for example, or the mistakes that we've made. Um, everyone's made mistakes, that's okay. But if we don't take time to turn that around into something positive and say, hey, this quarter I achieved um, this metric or this goal or finished this project. Um, for everyone, that's going to be something different. So if you're a developer, maybe you work in sprints. If you work at an organization that does uh, like quarterly reviews, maybe take that time to use that quarter to quantify like your successes. Um, so everyone's going to have a different cadence, and that's okay. Um, sometimes it's also okay to skip them, but try to set a, like a regular reminder to write down your wins. This is the really fun part. I really enjoy doing technology things not at my job. So there's a number of different ways that you can use like your own interest and your own um, kind of your hobby space, your home lab, whatever that is, um, and turn that into um, an experience builder for your resume. So have you done it professionally is something that a lot of applications are going to ask you about. Um, maybe you want to get into network security, but you've never been in a network role before, like at a corporate level. You've probably messed with your home Wi-Fi though. So um, talk about things that you've done maybe at your home lab or problems that you've encountered um, where you've tried to, uh, you know, maybe you've tried to solve a problem but you've made it worse or uh, you had to learn something new to get to that end goal. Um, something I hear in a lot of uh, career coaching sessions that I have is this question, tell me about a time. Recruiters um, like to use, uh, you know, scenarios to try to get you to explain um, a time that you've either encountered a problem or exhibited a behavior, you can use your DIY experience, your home life experience to answer those questions. Tell me about a time you um, had an issue where uh, you were presented a problem you initially didn't see. Well, setting up your relative's printer over the phone can be a bit of a challenge. You can talk about those times when maybe things didn't go as you expected because the person on the other end of the phone didn't have any idea what you were talking about. Um, so I would say just try to make sure that you're framing um, your experience, not just in like the stuff that you've done corporately and like received a uh, you know a paycheck for. I think it's super important to just turn that around and say, hey, I do have experience doing this. I ruined my home Wi-Fi several times, but this is how I've learned about it, and this is where I've grown. Um, home labs also don't have to be super expensive. I think something that a lot of people think is that to have um, any experience at home, it has to be on a great great scale. Um, for a couple of bucks, you can get a Raspberry Pi. You can get um, Anything really at Micro Center you can take home doesn't have to be like a million dollars. Sure, it's small. You don't have to have an enterprise budget to like have the same problems. Believe me, problems exist large and small on all budget scales. You really don't have to spend a lot of money for that. Um, I also would think uh, that being intimidated by not having that would prevent you from like dipping your toe into uh, new technology. Don't let that be the case. Buy the thing, just Google the shit out of it, and. <laughs> Then watch YouTube videos on where you went wrong. It's okay. Someone else has already had this problem, and you're not reinventing the wheel here. Learn from other people. So I would say, whatever you do, just be open to new experiences. Talk to people who have done the same things that you've done, or maybe things that you hope to do in the future. Um, and then we can together conquer new problems. I'm sure that a lot of you are working on technology today that did not exist 10 years ago. The technology changes, but the problems don't. We have to solve them in new ways, and by having new people in the room, we're able to do that. This is my Twitter handle. You guys can come find me after. Uh, let's go eat some barbecue. You need to do some? Awesome. <laughs> Any questions? Go for it. Not a question, but um, good advice. And one of the best things that someone told me when I started Burns was record things wins as they come because our reviews are at the end of the year. Yep. How are you going to remember at the end of the year what you want in January? Yep, 100%. So I try to, like on a monthly basis, set aside just a little bit of time to talk about things that um, like I'm working on today um, that I expect to maybe want to talk about in the future that I've like learned or like something that I'm working on that's new. Um, I think that a lot of times it's really easy to remember the mistakes at that year cycle, but it's really hard to remember all those tiny wins on the way. So 100%. I think so. Yeah. Does everybody have like a frack book or something that they write their like wins down in? Trust start you. one. Start a virtual one. Start a piece of paper. Don't put it on a corporate computer. Don't put it on your work email. You'll lose it. The day that you leave that organization, you will forget to take that because you're really <laughs> excited about the new job. You won't remember. So make sure you turn that into an opportunity that you can take that with you and then just continue growing. That's what I would recommend.
Any other questions? Awesome. Well, you guys can find me on Twitter. I'm also in the Betterment Village. Um, we are wonderful people. We like to talk about mental health, um, financial planning advice. If you were in the talk before this one, uh, and you know, we're all here to be better people, find better jobs. Awesome. Let's go get work, you guys. <laughs>